Jennifer. A colleague at ProPublica has called you a data delver. <laughs> and you also, along with everybody else on this panel, have a strong history in the use of data, mm -hmm. including teaching other reporters how to use it to do their investigations. What have you learned from that experience, and what advice would you have for the government? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and this is from my perspective as a journalist and working with journalists over the years and using government data. Um, you know, I think a lot of the, you know, agreed with what Tom said, you know, there's a lot to be commended on, you know, efforts to make more data available, uh, change the mentality to make more things available, um, you know, but a lot more needs to be done. Me personally, flashy graphics, pretty pie charts, things like that do not help me do my job. Um, I want the actual data. Um, and for many years, I've, you know, been told over the years that, you know, our database is too complicated for you, Missy, um, and things like that. Um, but, you know, a lot of journalists actually have the capacity to use data. One thing we try to do at ProPublica is, you know, analyze large data sets and then make that available to local reporters who just don't have the capacity for that. I mean, one of the, the goals of ProPublica, which is a nonprofit newsroom based in New York City, is to do more investigative reporting and to help news organizations that can't do that um, do investigations. So we hopefully are providing tools for people to do that. Um, you know, every data set we get in, whether it's federal or state, have a consistent set of problems with, you know, inconsistent name spellings, um, you know, impossible values in numeric fields. Um, and so we have a set of standard integrity checks that we do to work with that data. Um, you know, one project we do every quarter now is uh, building a recovery tracker database because the data that's on recovery.gov does not give a picture that a local reporter could use or give a complete picture. Um, a couple reasons for that. One, um, the data does not include a lot of other spending that were not jobs uh, projects in the stimulus. Um, that has to come from USA spending.gov, which that has a whole other set of cleaning issues that we have to deal with. Um, and in addition to that, uh, things like county is not included in the data. So we have to add that information because if you're a local reporter covering a local county, you want to know how much money your county got. Um, so we do things like that. Um, I'm glad to hear all the things you're working on, Todd. It sounds really exciting. Uh, one project we did earlier this year was um, a dialysis tool for folks to find out about the dialysis centers near where they live. Um, there is a site on the um, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid website that tracks dialysis centers, but there it's a very few variables, and from our research was not necessarily the variables that are most helpful to people. And so um, after two years, a request that was put in and we waited for two years, we did get the complete dialysis tracking data set and were able to put that data up um, so that folks could uh, find the best dialysis facility where they lived. Um, you know, I think data.gov is a great effort, um, but you know, when I've gone in and tried to figure out what the high value data sets are, I'm thinking from my perspective, and I don't want to pick on any agencies, but I have one little example of why some of those things aren't um, always super useful. If you search data.gov for the National Endowment for the Arts, little organization, I know. Um, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. There's one data set, which is the survey of what people think about the arts. At least there was two days ago when I checked. Um, the data journalists want to use from NEA is who got the money. Um, and that is on the NEA website in a really not standardized format that's kind of hard, especially for someone without a lot of experience, to get into a database so that they can actually analyze it. Um, that, I would consider, would be one of the high-value data sets. I don't really care about what people think about the arts. I want to know where the money's been spent. I want to know anything that is inspected, spent, <laughs> enforced, or licensed. That's the information that I want. And that's the information that the public wants. Um, you know, and to have it in a pure format. Uh, straight CSV files or APIs, as Todd was talking about, you know, make it easy. Almost anyone can open a CSV file. Excel will hold a million records now. So it's, you know, a lot of the barriers we had before with opening text files aren't necessarily there. Um, you know, providing documentation, not just putting the data there, but explaining how it was gathered, you know, caveats to the data, what fields and codes mean. Heck, uh, include a copy of the form that's used to gather the information there, uh, which is always helpful. Um, some other things that agencies do that's been very helpful to me over the years, um, 
the FMCSA of DOT, the Federal Motor Carrier um, Office, um, has a tool that actually tracks the quality of data they get from states, which when I was a reporter uh, writing about truck accidents in Texas was exceedingly helpful because they have categories where they've said the information we get in this one category from Texas is not up to the quality standards we need. And so then I could be aware of that and fix that as far as trying to get data from my state to fill in for that information. That, that was very helpful. And someone um, on the panel said, um, you know, uh, Todd, you said about allowing people to complain about the data. Um, along with that, I'm hoping someone's actually reading those complaints. Um, you know, so we're really um, interested in, in, you know, rows and columns of data on, on things that are, you know, important to keeping agencies accountable. Um, one thing that often bothers me, and I know there's a lot of legacy systems, fewer now, um, where it is very expensive or cumbersome to make a data set available while redacting out private information. I would hope there would be an effort on any new database designed from today forward um, to make it so that it is easily um, it's, it's set up to easily redact that private information. Um, occasionally we'll have a data set where supposedly people's names could be hidden in comment fields, but we want the comment fields, um, and that takes hours and hours of someone going through it. No database should be designed with that flaw. You know, from this point on, today databases should be designed so that things need to be withheld. They're set up so they can easily be withheld. So that's my two cents. Thanks. Well, I'm going to 